तस्मगुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा ददाति स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्रीगुरशयुत पदकमल श्रीगुरोन्वैष्णवश श्री सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथ वित सजीव साधवैत सवदूत परीजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण कर्ण सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांक्षुन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नामस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशकारिणे श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत कदाध श्रीवास आदिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सॉरी फॉर द डिले सपोज टू रीच बर टेन थर्टी बट आई हैन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉल टू अटेंड सो आई हैव टू डिले विच वॉज माई डील विच चेतन आता प्रो दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू बी इन द कैम्प दैट वुड बी सम डिले ड्यू टू सम इम्पॉर्टेंट एंगेजमेंट हरे कृष्ण सो ऑल ऑफ यू हैड दर्शन येस्टडे How many have the darshan of Radha Madhav after my class for the first time? That must be a very special experience. <coughs> so when Shri Prabhupada, as I mentioned, <coughs> Shri Prabhupada as a child, he actually <coughs> grew up in a Vaishnav family. his father and mother both were devotees and father was a very great devotee every day prabhupad actually mentions in his life biography which is there recorded by his devotees his disciples as mentioned that shri prabhupad used to <coughs> say that uh, his father used to every day what prabhupad remembers from his father that his father used to every day get up in the morning and uh, he would worship radha and krishna he would worship radha and krishna so <clears throat> when his father would get up and ring the bell to wake up the deities you understand deities everyone understand deities vigra when he would wake up the <clears throat> before opening the temple it is understood that lord is taking rest so you have to ring the bell and then clap and then open like that so whenever his father used to ring the bell like this so that's when he used to wake up he used to wake up in the morning and uh, he used to you know then get ready to do the because after that she, his father used to wake up the deities bathe do abhishek to the deities and then after that dress them and then he would do darshan all of you attended today 7 7 am darshan arti so that's called darshan so that's the shingar <coughs> so he used to get ready to assist the father for that his father uh, prabhupad's father's name was uh, gor mohan de so prabhupad narrates this that that's what's my life and he said that my father he used to <clears throat> most of the time he used to be busy worshiping and then he was he used to go out to work only for name sake he was a strong believer that whatever is in karma is going to come i have to just do my duties he was not a person who would believe that i have to go out and then work and then <clears throat> i will have all my facilities 
to live a very peaceful life. Not like that. He was a strong believer. He, hold, he would do elaborate worship and then after that offer bhoga, take prasad and go out and few hours come back. So Srila Prabhupada mentioned that that had a very great impact in Prabhupada's life. That as he grew up, he could identify himself that I am the son of so and so who is a devotee of Lord Krishna. Had a very great impact in his life. As he grew up, Prabhupada went to university and then he was studying in Calcutta. You know the college of Prabhupada, Sco uh, Scottish, right? Scottish Church College. So Prabhupada was studying there. And maybe high school and later maybe degree was the same college. So at that time in India, there was a great uh, civil disobedience and parallelly, you know, the Gandhi movement. All of now history is getting a little clear that India did not get the freedom actually because of Gandhi's struggle. It was Subhash Chandra Bose. So Prabhupada was very influenced by the Gandhi movement. Parallelly, Subhash Chandra was both was a senior of Prabhupada in the college, in the same college. He was studying two classes ahead of Srila Prabhupada in the same college. So the freedom movement had a great influence on Srila Prabhupada you know, until he met his uh, spiritual master. Prabhupada mentions that um, his father was such a great uh, devotee that he saved him. He saved him. How? He said that Prabhupada's family and the grandparents, Srila Prabhupada, they had made arrangements for Srila Prabhupada to go to London and become a barrister. <coughs> but Prabhupada's father rejected it. He said, No. Abhai will not go. Abhai Charanaraminda. Abhai will not go to London to become barrister. I don't want my son to go and learn to eat meat do illicit sex and accept that culture with some so-called degree. You know? Because that's what life in the West is, right? The basic, biggest attraction for an Indian to go, go to America or in the Western world, one is definitely money, but the second thing is sense gratification, correct? You get to see naked women in the beach in the West, you don't see that in India, still there's culture and there's so much of you know, freedom of free mixing there. That's how every youth thinks, you know, and Prabhupada's father is. And then everyone eats meat there. There is no wage there. Very rare. It's three times the cost. Many vegetarians become non vegetarian vegetarians become non vegetarian there because of the cost also. It's so expensive. Wage. So Prabhupada's father did not want it that Abhay should become like this. So he said no. He will not go. And he will become a devotee of Radharani. So Prabhupada's father, Srila Prabhupada remembers that uh, <coughs> he, he narrates this pastimes of his own life, citing one of his incidents of his uh, college life, which changed his life. So uh, Prabhupada's friend, Srila Prabhupada's one college friend, told him uh, that uh, a very great sadhu has come nearby. Let us go and meet him. Let us go and meet a sadhu. Now, for us in India, specifically after the Mughals and the British ruled, for us sadhu means eh, some run-down fella, some beggar on the street, someone sitting on the outside the temple with a katora, or maybe some guy who comes to the house and chants some mantra which nobody understands and pick some flowers and some fruits and monies and walks off. Isn't it true? For all of us, that's what a sadhu is, no? He will come, chant some mantras, mother will say, sit down, sit down, sit down. We don't understand, he also doesn't understand probably what he speaks. That's what our understanding is. But 
things were a little different in the Vedic time. So, Srila Prabhupada's father also used to invite many uh, sadhus, Vaishnavas, to his house. He would feed them prasadam. After feeding, he would tell them that, please bless my son so that he becomes a devotee of Srimati Radharani. To bless, please bless my son so that he becomes a devotee of Srimati Radharani. That's what the desire of Prabhupada's father was. And you can see uh, what a revolution it created in the world. So Prabhupada narrates this that you know when his when his friend invited him, let's go to a, meet a sadhu. So he said that I have met many such sadhus because when Prabhupada's father would invite the sadhus to his house, not everyone had that standards, very high standards, you know, of a Brahmana, of a Vaishnava. Some were a little compromised. Some would bring drink sometimes some bidi also, like that. So Prabhupada saw all these things in his childhood. So he was not so interested. So when his college friend was interested in insisting him, let's go and meet this sadhu. So Prabhupada said, no, I have met many of them. No, 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 he's a different person. You please come. So he went and there it was, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. I think Ishan Prabhu will speak about him when we are going to his, his temple, Chaitanya Mat. But he was such a great scholar of his own era. I can only tell one pastime of Bhakti Siddhanta to introduce you what he was. He was such a great scholar, so well versed in philosophy, literature and English. He said that once he was giving a lecture on a spiritual topic and a viceroy and his assistants, they came. They passed, they were there around, they heard him. So when they heard him speaking English, they said that we should have this pen to teach English to our Englishmen. We should have this man to teach English to our Englishmen. He was such a great scholar. So when he met Srila Prabhupada, so Prabhupada was pushed by his friend and there was a first interaction between Srila Prabhupada and his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was actually preaching the Gaudiya mission. Uh, after the Britishers, it is said that in India, the Mughals, for 700-800 years, they actually destroyed so many temples and converted people by force. Their tactic was to just destroy. So that's one of the reason if you see too much on the northern part, you don't have much the Vedic culture now. Because the culture was destroyed, it was ruled by the Mughals for a long, long time. And then you see that the southern part, it's not that much. Have you seen that? From South India, they will know this. Because it was... <coughs> It was the Vaishnava king Shivaji Maharaj who actually blocked the, the Mughals and the Britishers too much influence on the southern part and the southwest part. <coughs> so, pra, uh, but, uh, when Prabhu Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur's father, he was preaching in the British era. We will hear about him from Sudama Prabhu at Godrum. <laughs> About Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the father of, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Sar Thakur. But when he was preaching, that was completely hodgepodge religion. People would practice Krishna consciousness, sadhus would be just living independently here and there in some holy places. And then if it's too cold, they would drink some cigarettes to keep themselves warm. And <coughs> because they were not monitored, there was no proper parampara. So everyone was just independently practicing. Sometimes some people would also think that if Krishna did Rasalila, we can also do Rasalila. So they would preach some ladies, make them disciples and perform Rasalila with them. Like this, a whole hodgepodge religion was going on. At that time, 
Shri La Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he stood up and he very boldly preached against all these things. Very, very boldly preached. So now, he had interaction with Prabhupada and Prabhupada already had this in mind. The sadhus are compromised and he was already seeing that this nation is a dominating nation. So when they had the first interaction, Prabhupada's Guru Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was very impressed. So see a young boy, educated, who knows the Vaishnava philosophy, coming from a devotee family and speaks English. So Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told him that, why don't you, you are an educated young Indian gentleman, why don't you take the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the western world? Why don't you take the message? In one sense, he said, why don't you do which the duty of Indians is? I tell yesterday. Janma sartak kari, Bharat bhumi to hoilo janma yar, janma sartak kari karo paropakar. So why don't you take this message of Lord Chaitanya and go to the western world? So Prabhupada had a conversation. He said that he, in his mind he was thinking and then finally he told Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that who will listen to the message of a nation which is dominated by another nation because India was under the British rule at the time he said who will listen to the message of a of a who will listen to the message of a nation which is dominated by some other nation so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasya Thakur gave him a very nice answer which actually struck Srila Prabhupada he said the message of Godhead, the message of Godhead doesn't depend upon a political situation of a nation. It is the need of every living being, especially in the human form. You understood all of you this? It's very simple. He said that the message of the Bhagavad Gita in one sense and the Bhagavatam, message of Lord Chaitanya is the, Bhagav the message of Bhagavatam and you know Bhagavad Gita is actually a need of every human being irrespective of what political situation he is in correct in my experience actually that I was always thinking that yeah Prabhupada said like this Bhakti Siddhanta told like this Prabhupada liked it and he went but today the situation of the world gave a very nice deep contemplation to me because you see there are two nations fighting now which are those Nobody is interested now to know what is happening. Anyone is interested to know? No. Right? But on the name of patriotism, people are dying. Correct? Prabhupada said this only, that we demark as nation. We create a boundary. Like, you know, if you have seen in your own cities, especially in Bivandi, I have seen, the roads are taken over by the dogs in the night. Have you seen that? The streets are taken over by the dogs in the night. And then one dog will come, it will pass urine in four corners. One, two, three and four. And say registered. <laughs> registered. Whole night. You seen that? And no any dog will any dog will pass by, any car will pass by. <laughs> you seen that? And morning, morning, someone will come, one throw one stone and they will register you over. Morning will become normal, you know. So Prabhupada said, just like a dog passes urine and thinks that it is mine. Similarly, human beings come for some time in this world and demark some house, some property, some nation and they think it's theirs. And they die and go, the land is there only. So I was coming, so Prabhupada, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta's answer to Srila Prabhupada was like this, that, that the message of God is for everyone. By, why? It doesn't depend upon the political situation. Today we can see Russia and Ukraine, they got into a fight. Ukraine knew very well. What they knew? Huh? They will not win. My God, first three days there was a hype. World War Three. Zelensky kya karega? My, oh my God. I to stop watching only one, two days after that. I said, that let World War Three happen, you know. <laughs> you know, 10, 15 days, everyone into it and now nobody is watching it also. If you practically see, Chanakya Pandit, according to Neeti, he teaches 
that the wise king is a king who saves his citizen by bowing his head isn't it true by bowing his head but this false patriotism what shila prabhupada actually answered to his bhakti siddhanta answered that the message of god it doesn't depend upon the political situation imagine if this prime ministers or presidents they were devotees and they had this knowledge where you are not this body we are spirit soul and what is this land you know territory we are demarking and marking it it is nothing to do so they would fight like this would they fight no so the prob real solution is krishna consciousness the message of gita and bhagavat message of gita and bhagavat so bhagavat was very struck by this answer and then he started contemplating from then shila prabhupat tried a lot to preach in india but at that time the whole indians were under the british rule and later when the freedom happened also after 1947 prabhupat tried a lot to preach even he used to go to his friends his father's friends those who had four four sons three three sons he would request them why don't you give one of your son so that i can take him train him up and make him a preacher of bhagavatam and bhagavad gita nobody was interested everyone was interested in making their sons into doctors and engineers as if you know that's the only occupation which the planet needs you know everyone was busy into this so prabhupada tried a lot to preach in india first and when he saw that indians are not at all interested you will see that also in india even today it's 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 worse now spiritual point of view isn't it true it's worse nobody if you all of you gentlemen sitting here go and tell your parents that you know hum log gaye the aur ye log ne humko aise aise bola are chup jaane ga nahi udhar they'll tell immediately they'll tell you jaane ga nahi udhar unfortunate situation it's called degradation isn't it true degradation degraded society spiritual activity makes a human being a proper human being and that is you know unfortunately so unfortunately you know being uh, objected isn't it being objected that to in india <laughs> that to in india yeah. so prabhupad faced this a lot so then he remembered and he decided let me go to america and preach he thought that indians are not interested so let me preach to the americans and bring them because india was following the west and his guru's already instruction was to preach in the west so he thought let, let me go to the west and preach and bring the westerners to india to preach here then the indians will wake up and it exactly happened and you can see that in mayapur no So Prabhupada went there. At some time other, I'll tell you a very big past time of Shri Prabhupada. Maybe in one of these days, if I get time, how he struggled alone in America. So two years he struggled alone in America, and when uh, a group of young devotees got interested, because Prabhupada did exactly what you all were doing yesterday. You did kirtan and went to Prabhupada Samadhi, Samadhi Temple, no? So Shri Prabhupada did like this kirtan in America, and a young boy did this stood up and started dancing like this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So they stood up. They liked the kirtan, and they followed Prabhupada. Prabhupada gave them some prasadam. they liked the prasad they again came to meet shila prabhupad prabhupad started giving lectures to them so many of those devotees they say that they could not understand what prabhupad spoke about the philosophy so much but they could understand two things one is that this man is a very genuine man and he loves us 
and what he is speaking is actually truth. Second thing, that they would love prashadam what he made. And for that prashadam they would come back, you know, every time. And Prabhupada used to make gulab jamuns, very nice gulab jamun. And when Prabhupada understood that these young devotees, they like gulab jamuns, so Prabhupada used to give a class and put a glass jar in front of him, filled with gulab jamuns. So these, these young American boys, they would think that, array. anyway, even if we are not understanding the class, after the class, Swamiji will give gulab jamuns. <laughs> Let us stay for the class. Right? Many a time it happens in India also. Everywhere it happens because uh, our current society, even our samaj and family have not introduced us to God properly. Correct? They have introduced temple jana hai. Kuch to karke. Aa jana hai. Right? Otherwise you can have a list of what you want, you know. Mere ko ye chahiye, mere ko chahiye, you know. So, it, there, there was one devotee who was telling that people go with a list to God for what they want. And God is waiting. When this fool will wake up and ask, my Lord, whatever I have, you have given me, please tell me why you gave. The Lord is waiting for someone to ask this. <laughs> isn't it? Whatever we have is given by God. Isn't it true? Nobody asked this, you know, why he gave us. That comes from the culture. <clears throat> so, Prabhupada preached and then it is one pastime I will say of Prabhupada when he brought devotees from America <clears throat> in India and he was giving one lecture. I think it was it was, I don't remember, it was in a very big metro city. He was in a house of one big gentleman and uh, there were there were <clears throat> Prabhupada was like all of you are sitting, like this many young Americans and Europeans were sitting in his class. So Prabhupada gave a lecture and he said that he said that Motilal Nehru, who is the father of Jawaharlal Nehru, in his era during the British time, he was such a proud man. He said that uh, Motil Nal Nehru had one white British servant. You understand? A white British servant. Matab, kene ka matab ye hai ki British Raj mein Motil Nal Nehru ne ek British noker rakha tha. And he used to pay that servant ten times. At least five to ten times they say. What he would have to give an Indian. And he was to feel so proud, you know. To feel so proud. And Prabhupada was giving a class, he said, I have this hundreds of white Europeans and Americans as my servants to preach our message. And I don't pay them anything. <laughs> what did Prabhupada say? I don't pay them anything. <coughs> and it was a shock. Even now, many of these young boys who have come here, you know, when you see, like our Sudama Prabhu is here, right here, you know, with us. <laughs> it's a shock for all of us to see that how can someone give up, you know. Giving up, you see many people taking some religion here and there, but practicing is it so sincerely. You know, here in Mayapur, more than 2,000 devotees from the West, they stay here. You saw? They stay here, they reside here. And this is, this is a village, huh? have you seen it's all around field? It's a village, they stay here to progress spiritually. So Prabhupada's mission was very successful. But Prabhupada's further mission was to change the whole world. And he wanted people from around the world to come here in Mayapur and Vrindavan. Practice Krishna consciousness. Perfect their life in this holy dham, pure place. And go back and preach wherever they are. It's like in a battlefield. You know, there is one place where, where, you know, loading happens. What loading happens, you know? Huh? Ammunition, they call, no? Ammunition loading happens in the battlefield also. I mean, so Prabhupada wanted that devotees to be loaded, <coughs> charge themselves here and go. So Mayapur is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's land and Iskon had nothing here. So Srila Prabhupada, after preaching in Mumbai, and 
as I told in the class, no, like Prabhupada said that, you know, this, uh, this, uh, these young Americans and Europeans, I don't even pay them anything. So Prabhupada used to go with a great pride in India to preach, and he used to be very heavy with the Indians, because Indians are spiritually so dull, where they are supposed to be guiding the world in spirituality. So one time he was in Gujarat. This is also my favorite pastime. So the Gujarati family is there in Hindi lectures. You can hear. This is, this is, so Gujaratis are telling, why did you do something for the poor people? So yeah, we are doing for everyone. Krishna consciousness is not only for poor or rich. So no, 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 no. We are taking something. So Gujaratis, I mean, Prabhupada was giving heavy answers. So one gentleman said, Swami ji, why do you do something for the He said, we can do something for everyone. Bhakti is for everyone. What is for everyone? What is for everyone? भक्ति के लिए सभी गरीब है बोले नहीं नहीं हम लोग तो ठीक है आप गरीब लोगों को कुछ क्यों नहीं देते बोले आप ये क्यों सोचते हैं आप ठीक हो नहीं हमारे तो घर है ना हम तो काम तो करते हैं हम लोग बोलता गधा भी यही सोचता है गधा भी यही सोचता है और दिन भर वो क्या करता है काम करता है और उसको लास्ट में रात को क्या मिलता है उसका मालिक थोड़ा सा घास देता है गधे को दिमाग ये नहीं है कि अगर वो मालिक को छोड़ के जंगल में चला जाएगा वो ही ग्रास फ्री में पड़ा हुआ है तो गधा भी यही सोचता है तो प्रभुपाद यूज टू प्रीच वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग लील लाइक दिस लाइक वन पर्सन टोल प्रभुपाद स्वामी जी आर यू गॉड रियलाइज सो प्रभुपाद दिन नॉट इंटरटेन ही टूक अनर क्वेश्चन बाई इंटरव्यू रिपोर्टर्स अगेन द पर्सन के मैन Swami ji, are you got realized? So Prabhupada did not entertain. When he told third time, Swami ji, I wanted to know, are you realized about God? So Prabhupada looked at him. If I say yes, will you accept it? So the guy, now he had to answer. Because he was answering Prabhupada, asking question. Prabhupada said, if I say yes, will you accept it? And everyone is looking at him. So he said, um, it would be difficult. And Prabhupada said, then what is the use of such a nonsense question? <laughs> what is the use of such a nonsense question? So, he preached in such a way, such a way that it did not only wake up people about spirituality, it even woke up about their ignorance. Because if you answer a question of a questioner, you are actually giving an answer to the person asking the question. But you, if you question the questioner about his question, you are waking up of his ignorance. You understand my point? You are waking up about his ignorance. And Indians, unfortunately, that situation. One time, someone asked Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, if suppose, in the end of your life, you come to know that there is no God, no Krishna, no spiritual world, nothing. And then, how will you feel? And he was waiting how Prabhupada will express and give an elaborate answer, explain. And Prabhupada's answer was, so what? So Krishna consciousness is still so blissful. Nice kirtan, nice prasadam, everything is so blissful. So what is it? The guy was shaken. And then Prabhupada said, suppose, end of the life you come to know, Krishna is there, spiritual world is there, and hell is also there for not falling, then what? So that's how Srila Prabhupada preached and so many young devotees. Because, see, youths, they need engagement. If you don't engage, Kali Yuga is a place of, the nature of Kali Yuga is to do sin. Sin. For example, if I tell you one shloka of Bhagavad Gita now, and we all practice and by tomorrow morning you will forget. But one dirty joke which you hear in childhood, whole life you will remember. For life development. Isn't it true? So that is the nature of mind in Kali Yuga. So it's very important to mind to be engaged in the right thing. So Prabhupada's preaching actually woke up young people. 
his style, his presentation, his courage, his faith in God. And then as I was mentioning Srila Prabhupada, he actually <coughs> wanted, his Guru Maharaj also wanted that there should be a spiritual revolution in the life of humanity at large. So then he made this place as a headquarters, Mayapur. He said, Mayapur, the land of Lord Chaitanya, will be the spiritual headquarters. So he told his disciples, search a land in Mayapur to buy. Have you visited Prabhupada's Kutil? Not yet. So you, they will be visiting, right? So Prabhupada <coughs> sent one of his disciples to buy a land in Mayapur. So there were many people who had landlords, who had lands in Kolkata. They were landlords, they were living in Kolkata. So this piece of land, a small piece of land was purchased, which is right on the entrance gate, earlier entrance gate, you know, there you will be going. And there was a small hut made. So when Prabhupada came here with his disciples, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, Bhavananda Prabhu, Jaipataka Maharaj, they are his prominent senior disciples. So they, <coughs> Srila Prabhupada came with them and then, even now if you see, just if you go that side, it's all jungle, can you see? You can see, no? You can imagine 1972 what it was. Except a narrow kacha road, there was nothing here. Nothing here. Only fields and jungles and Ganga. So Prabhupada came to this land and uh, saw the piece of a land which his disciples have bought and looked very happily around like this. Looking at what we are, look, we are sitting in right now, he looked all this. And he told his disciples that this place will be the world headquarters of the Krishna consciousness movement. You can say that, but those disciples at that time, they were looking around what Prabhupada is looking. There were only overgrown grasses, uncut rice paddy and only jungles and they were seeing where Prabhupada is seeing a spiritual city here. <laughs> so they were shocked. They were shocked. Today, after 50 years, we are sitting here in a spiritual headquarters. Isn't it true? So Prabhupada disciples were surprised what to do. Now comes the journey of Mayapur Dham actually. So, Srila Prabhupada actually told some of his very young disciples, Americans and Europeans, to stay there in Mayapur. And they, he told them, you every day do prasadam distribution and you every day do Sankirtan. Kirtan, that's it. So they were doing. So now this part of the nation was a lot of, lot of conversion happened. And a lot of people around here are Muslims. Saying Muslims. Now there is a lot of harmony in the locals and ISKCON. You know, now there is a lot of harmony. But in those days, uh, it was not the same. So after getting this small property, they built this, you know, the lotus building. If you see the lotus building, they built the lotus building. And uh, the small Radha Madhav, have you seen Radha Madhav big? And the small Radha Madhav and Gornita is there. Have you see on the left side down? Actually, they were being worshipped here. In one of the presentation, you can show the photos. Radha Madhav on the main altar, small Radha Madhav. They were worshipped here. And if you now also, if you look, they look like they are golden. But they are of Ashtadhatu, eight metals. Ashtadhatu, they are golden. They look golden. So a lot of the neighbor village, people of the certain community, Muslims, they would think that this is gold. And also, they didn't want it, this movement to grow at the time. So this is that one fine day in... Uh, <coughs> 1984, 24th March, midnight. 24 March, 1984, in midnight, some 40 to 50 dacoits, they attacked the temple. They attacked the temple. And uh, they were trying to take away the deities. They took the deity of Sri Bhati Radharani and Srila Prabhupada, small deity. If you see the Prabhupada deity which comes out for the procession, you were there in the Guru Puja? Yes. See, they were taking it, they were chasing. So devotees, of course, wanted to protect themselves first. But when they saw 
that is dockets is taking over the dds taking over the dds so even devotees came out and they actually revolt there was a gunman who went when he saw so many people he went into the bathroom and locked himself one of our devotees he broke the bathroom door took the gun and shot there were shots fired both the side some people even fell down because of the shots and there was a big commotion and devotees were arrested and put in the police station and there was lot of disturbance among the devotees so then the gbc the governing body commission governing body commission is the uh, top management body which manages iskon they are all prabhupads mostly prabhupads disciples so iskon is also managed by a very powerful structure described you know uh, 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 guided by shila prabhupads instruction so they all decided together that uh, in such situations the previous acharyas they installed installed the deity of narsimhadev anywhere such incidents would happen the acharyas would install the deity of narsimhadev because lord narsimhadev appeared only to do what he appeared to protect his devotee to to protect the dham and protect the devotees so it was discussed that let's go and get a deity of lord narsimhadev okay and the deity was installed after 2 years and worshiped yeah and they started worship you see it's very beautiful you saw narsimhadev there is a very beautiful story also how the deity manifested in 2 years you want to know the narsimhadev also appeared with a very nice leela of his own so one devotee shila prabhupada disciple named atma tatva prabhu can you tell subhikshar bro tell him i'm giving class <coughs> so atma tatva prabhu he actually uh made a drawing he was a very expert scholar from south india and he was very experienced about dd worship and uh, all the standards of dd worship so uh, bhavanand prabhu he actually told that we will have a ugra narsimha narsimha dev who is searching for the demon or the person who harassed his devotee that position dd then he made the dd and those day i mean even today these kind of dds are seen only in southern part of india if you seen black, <laughs> black big dds vishnu dds vishnu vigras they are all in north is you know babri masjid gyan vapi mandir and matra <laughs> mandir it's all destroyed in the northern part you know so in southern part these dds are made also carved also worshiped also a lot so uh, atma tatva went to south india and he went to meet uh, uh, it, you know what we call the uh, carver sculptors ha huh? sculptors so if you go to uh, south india there are certain places like kumbakonam we went to especially when we opened the bhivandi temple the small deities of bhivandi if you have seen if those who have visited bhivandi so i got it from kumbakonam i went and met a family whose generations and generations which means for 100 200 years of their family they are only duty used to carve deities metal deities so like this in kumbakonam there are in southern part of india there are like this sthapatis they are called sthapatis who are bona fide and empowered uh, community to make vishnu deities carve them and make them prepared for the worship So Atma Tatva Prabhu he went to one of them, one person who was a disciple of a uh, Kanchi Shankara Acharya's disciple. So he went and he showed him the deity, and he said, "This this person he saw that is oh he said this is Ugra, Ugra Narsimha Dev." He said, uh, "No no, uh, I won't carve this deity. I won't carve this deity. You please go away." so then after meeting this because this person was a very famous thapati after him 
he went to another three four stapatis and nobody was ready to carve a deity on narsimha dev and one who was ready he was not satisfied with the standard of the stapat so he came back to mayapur explaining the mayapur management and there was one dis- disciple a very senior devotee named radhapati prabhu yeah, radhapati prabhu who actually volunteered to sponsor the whole dt and all the paraphernalia for it so when he came back within few days again they sent him back and told him to go and meet the same stapati whom you met for the first time so navatma tatva prabhu again went and met this stapati and explained him that we are i am coming from navadeep in iskon temple we want this dt said ah then he saw again you have come so this time he was a little better he invited him made him sit and the dt which he had dro- made a drawing of you know he had made a drawing of ugra dt so this stapati he finished the drawing it was a little incomplete he says this is this is ugra form and then he said do you know why you want to uh, though i am helping you to finish uh, complete this but i won't be uh, carving it and then he explained him then he explained in the story that these kind of deities are no more made and no more worshiped also so i'm sorry i won't be but i will help you to finish this and then they had a nice cordial discussion and then again atma tatva was disappointed he went back to mayapur went back to be sent back again again he was sent back now this time when he came and the devotee told him now you go to the same person insist him you know insist him so he went back to the same stapati and insisted him so when he met him for the third time now he said that okay i will i will carve this dt for you he said i will carve the dt for you atma tatva prabhu writes the story of him accepting the carving the dt is more amazing you want to know that story also so what happens is he meets his guru and meets him and tells him that he has been approached by a devotees from navadeep his cons devotees who are devotees of lord chaitanya they do sankirtan hari naam and they want to worship the deity of ugra narsimha at navadeep dham so when i told this to my guru my guru was surprised he said do they know what they are getting into these deities are no more worshiped and they demand a very very high standard of worship and the guru told him another story there are so many stories in one story he said in near mysore there was a small village in that village a deity of narsimha dev was worshiped now this deity narsimha deities have demand very high standard first of all you to have a naishtika brahmachari to worship saffron only naishtika and along with that he said the standards were very very high in that village he said almost every week they would have a elephant procession for the deity of narsimha dev and there would be every week a lobred abhishek of narsimha dev and very very high standard of worship slowly slowly the standards started getting declined and it so happened the whole village became in a place a place of you know inauspiciousness and it so happened slowly 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 the village became a ghost haunted place nobody could live in that village anymore no remember he said are the iskon devotees serious about what they want then he said that he has already come twice he said no no don't carve this dd is not good for you is <coughs> not good for you and your family so that was the end between him and his guru the discussion before anand atmata tupu met him he received a letter from his spiritual master that he he discussed with him about various dd uh, various <coughs> activities of worship and also active on installing dt and in the note footnote of the letter the guru wrote for iskon you can carve this dt 
for his scorn you can and that stapati showed the letter on atmatatva that for his scorn you can carve this deity so then <coughs> he was very grateful so atmatatva prabhu told him so when can i come to take the deity he said no in 6 months your deity should be ready so atmatatva was very almost singing and dancing he reached mayapur you know and he reached mayapur and he explained everyone that the deity is work is started in 6 months we'll get the deity so after 3 and a half months atmatatva prabhu first went to south india and purchased a lot of brass and copper uh, bell metal paraphernalia you understand paraphernalia paraphernalia worship materials aarti bell uh, if you seen now yesterday who attended yesterday was sunday mangal aarti anyone attended did you see narsimha dev darshan in the mangal aarti they were all metal uh, lamps you saw that so all those like there so many paraphernalia he has so all those paraphernalia was purchased very nicely and then after purchasing everything he thought that i will see the finishing work of the dd and again come back to take the dd the delivery of the dd so he went to the stapati and told him so can i have a look how far you have reached he said which for for what are you asking he said atho the shock he said what are you asking he said our dd which dd he said narsimha dev dd he said yeah so he said you said 6 months it will be ready yeah i said that is after i get the stone 6 <laughs> months after i get the stone to carve the dd he said i am not making grinding motor you understand grinding motor ko oh, chakki pisne ke liye he said i am not making that i am making a dd of vishnu then he told another story which is so amazing also to know he said vishnu dds traditionally are made out of special stones which has life and there are two tests which is to be done on those stones to accept or it it proves that it has life it is for you know carving a vishnu dd he said there are seven eight different places of the that slab you have to hit on different places and there are certain sounds which will come if that sound comes the first test is done second he said there is a small bug which eats such black stones and that bug has to cross one corner of the stone from within and reach another corner if that is done then this deity is qualified to to carve a vishnu if this slab of stone is actually qualifies to be carved a deity of vishnu so atmatatva prabhu could not understand only and just was worried that what he will reply to the manipur management after coming back here he said who will is going to accept this story who is going to listen to me so when he came and her told the whole story waited for another one month to be again thrown back to go to see if they found the stone this time when he came after one month he said the stapati actually found the stone and the wife and the servant of the stapati told that ever since this stone is found the stapati is completely meditating on this stone he is many time is carving drawing and then again changing it as if something some discussion is happening between him and this slab of the stone and then finally after 3 months after 6 months the stapati carved the deity and he went to a nearby village for a marriage he did a small puja as soon as he reached the village for the marriage by the evening he got a message village was not far away few kilometers he got a message that your storehouse workshop is in fire he came running there everything was burned except narsimha dev dt standing like this he understood that the lord wants his worship to stand immediately called up here in mayapur and told the please take your dt atmatapur reached there and hired a very big uh, tempo truck those days the dt is used to be transported you know if you want to transport such a dt they would fill the truck with the sand half with the sand more than half after they put the dt then again fill some more sand so there would not be any jerks sir you know you can bring it very carefully 
so it is said that this dd was so heavy if you see it's a stone dd only dd if you see you don't understand it's a whole asana the down portion also if you see it's a very wide this thing it's more than 1 ton weight great difficulty the dd was put there on the truck and now these kind of dts require a lot of documentation because sometime it is mit best understood to be ancient dds being smuggled so archaeological department and various government departments are there who has to give the approvals after watching the dd so he said that are baap re this is something i did not know so he had to go to chennai meet those department he said to my surprise he said in 24 hours i went to all those offices and every government office he would come is their duty was to inspect and then sign the document he said they would come see the dt and not even see the document and sign it he said just sign it and let the dt go and he said with that document i would go to because from chennai you have to cross two three states to reach bengal he said at every check post any officer who saw that immediately signed and sent the dt and finally the dt is arrived in june somewhere in june 1986 and then narsimhadev worship started here a lot of great worship uh, was uh, done a great abhishek was done and then the dd is actually uh, have been worship since then there are many many stories of this dd is how it reciprocates with devotees many stories uh, one i can say you can read them also one story is that if you see narsimhadev has beautiful red eyes here you've seen that if you take darshan you've seen he has beautiful red eyes so few years ago not few months i think 10 to 15 years ago the pujaris they made reddish blue reddish blue eyes for lord he made the new eyes and they put to the lord and after putting that the head pujari while he was sleeping he would hear a voice i want my eyes back and he would wake up nothing is there you know after a few days he thought he thought he thought that he heard something else you know then again after a few days he heard a sound i want my eyes back then after a couple of time when this happened he went and reported to the senior pujari and then he went and saw the dds and then he understood that the lord is not happy with this eyes when they place the same eyes back and there was never again such wise to this pujari and still those eyes are there oh like this there are so many stories of lord narsimhadev of mayapur so in this way the lord narsimhadev he appeared here and since then as i told you shila prabhupad said this will be the spiritual head quarters of the world and we will have a a spiritual city here what after this dts were installed the next leadership purchased 700 acres of land mayapur is how much you know 700 as far your eyes goes live in the ganga back side the other three sides all belongs to his car in fact the previous leadership even bought 50 acres the other side to make a airport pratap nagar it's called i visited that land there was a great leader named harikesh maharaj he brought a land to make an airport railway station track full city now you can see from here no city you can see buildings on there's a hole if you go towards if you have gone towards prabhupad's uh, temple on the right side did you see a map now it's little faded because of the lockdown there's a whole plan of a whole city here, a spiritual city after that this was acquired and work is in progress since lord narsimhadev has appeared so this is a beautiful story how the devotees had so much so done so much. in fact before this details were installed there is one story 
His own is Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. He writes to Prabhupada. You know, when Prabhupada was there, the Muslims they attacked the devotees here. They bet devotees stripped to Western Matajis. And when devotee was emergency taken to hospital there, when the devotee was being treated in the hospital, another group of gundas they went and bet the devotees while they were actually getting treated in the hospital. So much struggle actually devotees went through. Today we are coming dancing, chanting, taking prasad. But there was a lot of struggle done by devotees for what we are actually enjoying today. So this is the beautiful story of Lord Narasimha Dev's appearance. Sri Narasimha Dev Bhagwan Ki! There is one devotee who narrated the pastime of how the Panchatatva arrived. You want to hear that? Yes. Have you seen the Abhishek video? Hmm? All of you saw? There was one devotee who narrated me this whole story. You want to hear that? Yes. You have time? Sure? Yes. It's sitting since 10 o'clock. Should I go on? Yes. So, Prabhupada has he told that make a temple in which you show the Vedic planetarium. You will see when you, they have a visit, not TOEP. They are visiting TOEP when they are staying here. So when you go into the temple, this construction, under construction temple, Prabhupada said build a temple and show the planetarium. Vedic, Vedic planetarium, the, not the solar system of the geography today. It, is, it, ends with, it ends till sun, that's it. The whole planetary gods where, you know, Yamaraj, others are staying, and middle, middle planetary system where we are. Show the whole thing and let the scientists from all over the world and see this and comment on it. Show what is showed in the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam speaks how the world is created, how destructions happen, what is the purpose of creation. So he says, show this. Make a temple which should show to the world. What is in the Bhagavatam? What is the glories of the Vedic, you know, uh, literatures? So, he said, and have this beautiful deities of Panchatattva. So, in 2003, in December, middle of December, very cold, and suddenly there was an announcement in the temple that the whole Mayapur city has to stop its activities today and as many Mirdangas, Kartals, Shank, Conch, all the instruments, please bring them to Yoga Pit. You will go today evening to Yoga Pit, which is like two kilometers away from here. Because the Panchatattva has arrived. Panchatattva has arrived. So the deity, they were also carved in South India. And they arrived here. After they were arrived, they were to be brought to the temple, inside the temple. Keep them there. So that was a big procession. Maybe 3,000 devotees were there. 100, 200 Mridangas were there. Kartals, a big Kirtan going on. Huge Kirtan. Yesterday you attended Gaurarti? Maybe 2-3 Mridangas, right? How was the Kirtan with 2-3 Mridangas? Imagine 50 Mridangas. Imagine 50 Mridangas. Huge Kirtan going on. And on the, uh, what we call tailor. Tailor, no? The truck which carries containers are called tailors, right? On a tailor, the deities were lying and tied up and they were brought. From this grade, they were right brought in front of... All of you enter the temple from Panchatattva entrance, right? So there the tailor came and it was standing. When the tailor came, there it was standing, there was a Kirtan going on. Whole community was out. There were 2-3 thousand devotees doing Kirtan, continuously doing Kirtan. And after one hour of Kirtan, a crane came. Crane. The crane came to lift the deities and take them on a trolley. From the tailor to put him on trolley. And from the trolley they were to be pushed inside the temple. When the trolley lifted the leader of the Sankirtan party. Who is the leader of the Sankirtan party? Huh? Who is the leader? So the crane first lifted Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
It's more than one ton. So it lifted. You know, they tied all this rubber, uh, this thing now, and they lifted. And it was just lifted like four feet above the earth, above the tailor. And uh, the two tires of the crane started getting lifted the other side. The crane started getting the lifted other side, you know. And, they, and then you imagine, because devotees are in ecstasy, only looking at the DT being lifted. The managers were in anxiety. They were trying to stop. They were trying to sitting there and stop the crane to turn around, you know. They immediately they lifted the DT back. And the these devotees were dancing, you know, there. Because the DT, why? And they were wondering why the DT is again lifted back. And then for one hour, there was meeting, discussion, and finally a bigger crane came. Bigger crane, very big crane came after one hour. Then this crane lifted the DT and put it on a trolley, a small trolley which had four tires to push. And then once it was put on the trolley, the devotees were dancing, dancing, doing some kirtan, you know, great ecstasy kirtan going on. And when that happened, after few minutes, there was a big sound, thak karke, the tire of the trolley blast, because of weight or, or the heat. It was December, there was no chance of heat, but for whatever reason. So immediately they bought jacks and lift the DT up and they were fixing the tire. That took another one hour. Now this is going on from 5.30. It's already one o'clock. By that time the Mayapur management said that make five drum of pasta and distribute to everyone. Because devotees were sitting there hungry. The drums of pastas came, it was given to all devotees sitting. So that the Sankirtan should go on. Uh, Sankirtan should go on. While the Sankirtan was going on, devotees were taking prashad. The jack was fixed. <coughs> with the help of the jack, the tire was fixed. So then with great satisfaction, devotees were pushing. And they went and took the deities inside the temple. They were trying to take it inside the temple. How many of you noticed that at the entrance of the Panchatattva, there are two doors? Have you seen? Have you seen? There are two doors. Right? So when the deities were taken from that, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taken from that door, what happened? Mahaprabhu's wide hands, which is spread to invite the world to come to his laps, they become so wide that they were stopped on the door. Mahaprabhu was like, I don't want to go. Another two hours, Kirtan was going on, they were breaking the sides of the door. That took two and a half, three hours. And it was by four o'clock when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, only Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went inside and he was kept there. The other four were there whole night on the tailor. Next day morning, within two hours, all of them went inside. Tuck, 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 tuck. When the master went, all the followers went immediately inside. And in this way, actually, Lord Panchadatva, when they arrived, they also did one day pastime with his devotees. So that they were so happy to see so many devotees, they wanted to spend the day with the devotees outside in Sankirtan. So that happened. And whole night Kirtan also happened. So this, and then after three months in 2004, in February 2004, there was a great Panchatattva installation festival. You all can see. Have you, how many of you saw the video of the installation of Panchatattva? You didn't show them? Show them? Oh, you are showing it after. Okay, okay. They are going to show it officially after this lecture. That was the installation. See Panchatattva Gwan Ki. So you can go now and. Uh, Watch the video and you can even, you want to know who was that person who narrated this story to me? You want to know? You want to meet him? Sure? It is me. I was doing my Bhakti Shasti, my graduation on the Bhagavad Gita at that time over here. And I happened to be here. Let me see if you find me in that video. Thank you very much.
so you can understand now how much sacrifice was done by Srila Prabhupada, his devotees and the devotees of ISKCON. If spirituality is present today in this world, if, 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 if people are introduced how God, who is the king of all the kings, has to be worshipped or introduced to the world, is actually in his contemplation. You can see that, right? The gorgeous worship, which attracts the heart of a person, not only eyes, you know, heart of the person to them. That is established by Srila Prabhupada. That is why he says he is a savior of the world. He saved spirituality for the world. Otherwise, young people would just say that he is superstition, hai, fall to believe. Hai. Isn't it true? People are puffed up. We would be so puffed up. Godless civilization and a godless society we would be living in. If the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam were not presented the way Srila Prabhupada presented, had he not established this kind of temples where you are taught what is the purpose of human life. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki Jai Shri Narasimhadeva Bhagavan ki Jai Shri Panchatatva ki Jai Shri Radha Madhava Vastu Saki ki Jai